Protecting democracy is a cornerstone of President Biden's re-election campaign today, taking that message onto the world stage for D-Day commemorations in France. We're living in a time when democracy is more at risk across the world than any point since the end of World War II, since these beaches were stormed in 1944. Now we have to ask ourselves, will we stand against tyranny, against evil, against crushing brutality? of the iron fist? Will we stand for freedom? Will we defend democracy? Will we stand together? My answer is yes and only can be yes. And it doesn't stop there. The president delivers another speech tomorrow in Normandy at Pointe du Hoc, the same monument where former President Ronald Reagan gave a famous speech on the 40th anniversary of D-Day. Joining us now, Mitch Landrieu, former senior advisor to President Biden and former White House infrastructure coordinator, who is now the national co-chair for the Biden-Harris campaign, and former mayor of one of the great cities in America, New Orleans, but we'll talk yes, about that another time. Look, <laughs> I, I think what we heard is a good snapshot of what the president um, may lean into tomorrow. Give us a preview, if you will. What's his message and why does he think it's important and that it will resonate? Well, as the president said, on June 6, 1944, 80 years ago, uh, 75,000 uh, men and women, uh, mostly an American force, but joined by 12 other nations, uh, saved the world and protected freedom. They gave their last full measure uh, because they were defending freedom and democracy. And I think the president has said many, many times, and he took this occasion, uh, because America is, in fact, an indispensable nation. It is the nation that has kept the NATO alliance together, that, in fact, we have to continue to do the things that we have done in the past to preserve freedom, because freedom isn't free. We can't take it for granted. And when we do, and we have to defend it, the price is usually paid by young, uh, the blood of young men and women. And the president is, again, making a clarion call not only to the people of America, but to the people of the world, that authoritarianism is on the rise. And we have to stand in the breach, just like those men and women did. So uh, on the shoulders of FDR, now on the shoulders of Reagan, here comes another American president, you know, representing to the world that America is a shining city on a hill. And I think the president did an excellent job expressing the wisdom, the character, and the courage of the American people. And I think that he will continue to do that. For folks that have not been there on Omaha Beach, where they were today, those cliffs are or maybe 100 yards high. It is an impossible uh, task that those young soldiers performed. And to stand uh, in that cemetery, which I did 20 years ago on the 60th anniversary, it is just really uh, a very, very, very somber reminder that we have to fight democracy wherever we find it. And the president has been very clear about this. He thinks, and I agree with him, as do most American people, that we're seeing the gravest threat to American democracy on our own land that we have seen in the history of the country. And Donald Trump is that threat. His vision of America, his vision of authoritarianism, his disdain for veterans, who he calls losers, NATO, which he wants to crush, his friendship with Putin, all of those things do not argue well for the freedoms that we have enjoyed. And you see the Supreme Court that he now appointed taking freedoms away from Americans. We have to really stand in the breach. And that is what his speech is about, both at home and abroad. We have to stand in the breach and protect the freedoms, lest we have the kind of bloodshed that we had where we lost so many lives and so many of our brothers and sisters gave the full measure of their sacrifice. But compared to the economy, compared to immigration, compared to crime, does your own polling suggest to you that this is something that is indeed resonating? And if so, there's reporting in Politico that the president's appearance and all the accompanying stagecraft are being engineered for public consumption in packaged clips that the campaign and the DNC plan to disseminate in the coming weeks. Is that how you put it out there and you think it will be effective in if not raising awareness, uh, maybe just giving people pause about what they might want to vote on in November? Well, uh, let me respond to that uh, in, a, in a couple of different contexts. First of all, uh, as I mentioned to you, um, 20 years ago when I was Lieutenant Governor of Louisiana, I represented the state at that very ceremony that George Bush had where he spoke with then-President Jacques Chirac. 
This happens every 10 years. This is the year that it happened. And of course, this can't possibly take place without the President of the United States thanking the men and women that are still alive. This will probably be their last centennial and representing the United States of America. And I must say, for people who say, well, how's Biden doing? And he says, watch me. I think everybody would agree that the President represented the United States of America very, very well. He remembered the speech that Ronald Reagan gave. He remembered uh, the talk that Franklin Delano Roosevelt gave. And he understands that as a president, of the United States. He represents all Americans, and he represents the continuous government from beginning uh, until its end, which is why he understands very clearly what you have to do to preserve democracy. And when you see tyranny, when you see autocracy, if you don't stand in the breach, if you take it for granted, it's going to be a problem. Now, all of those other issues are very important. The border is important. The economy is important. Rebuilding the country is important. All of them are important. But you can't have those discussions if you actually don't have a democracy and you don't have a country. Liz Cheney has spoken to this very many times, as has as have other conservatives who have warned who have worked with Donald Trump and warned time and time again that they worked with him, they saw how he thinks, they are troubled by his inability to put anybody in front of himself. This is what this guy does. He wakes up every day, he thinks about himself, then he thinks about hurting the people that he thinks hurt him, then he helps his rich friends. That's the wisdom, character, and judgment of Donald Trump. Joe Biden, on the other hand, gets up every day, he works for the American people. He stood up one of the strongest economies in the world, but knows we still have a lot of work to do because so many people are still hurting. And he's delivered four of the biggest pieces of domestic legislation that we've seen actually since Eisenhower, who, as you know, was the supreme commander on that particular day. So let me ask you about how you get him reelected. NPR just spoke to a guy who I'm assuming you know now, Austin Weatherford. He was Adam Kinzinger's former chief of staff. He confirmed he has gone to work for you guys to convince Republican voters to support Joe Biden. What can you tell us about what Republican outreach will look like? What does your internal polling tell you about how many Republicans in general and maybe Nikki Haley voters specifically might be up for grabs? Well, a couple of things. First of all, President Biden, on the first day that, that he asked me to help him, said to me, you make sure that everything that's coming out of that infrastructure bill gets to everywhere in America, red states, blue states. I represent everybody, whether they voted for me or not. That's Joe Biden's character. Donald Trump's character is, if you're not my friend, then you're my enemy and I'm not going to help you. He told that to the people that ran against him who said I might endorse him. Donald Trump is for retribution. Joe Biden is for inclusion. So the people of America can expect that we're going to reach out to every voter in America and ask them to join our team because Joe Biden's got big shoulders. We have a big tent. But you don't need to often look and Weatherford intern, be doing well, specifically, finish. what will but, that look like but, as one part well, of your campaign? Well, I, what, it, what it looks like is us reaching out to every voter, Republican or Democrat. We have, as you know, President Biden was in Philadelphia the other day talking about African Americans for Biden. There's women for Biden. There will be Republicans for Biden. But you don't have to rely on the internal polls. You may recall that in some of the Republican primaries, after Nikki Haley dropped out of the race, she was still clocking in at fairly substantial numbers, which you have now called the Haley voters. Those are people that have been Republicans, but they were part of a Republican Party that doesn't exist anymore. And I believe that they think that Donald Trump is dangerous for America, and we're going to be speaking to them. We'll speak to them the same way we speak to other voters. We'll make phone calls. We'll ask for endorsements. We'll actually campaign. We're going to go everywhere. We're going to be everywhere because we're not bringing uh, a knife to this gunfight. And so this is going to be a tough campaign. Nobody uh, should expect anything. It's going to be a very close campaign. And by the way, uh, I saw your last interview. The fact that Donald Trump is a convicted felon will absolutely have resonance for the people of America when the chips are down and they are called upon to save our democracy and preserve our freedom. What makes you think that? Because I trust in the American people. And I, I believe that when it comes down to a choice between a man who is a danger to other people who has asked the court for permission to engage SEAL Team 6 to kill his political enemies, who out of his mouth almost every day is about retribution and revenge, is a guy that doesn't have the wisdom, the character, or the judgment to lead the most indispensable nation that has ever existed. And I feel very, very confident that this is going to be a very hard-fought race, but when the chips are down, the American people are going to show up just like those kids did uh, 80 years ago. Mitch Landrew, appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Thank you.